Hello folks, Minmax Munchking back with another video. Uh, first and foremost, as I usually do, the Patreon shoutouts. So Mike, Matthew, Ewing, Larry Hawk, and Bartley Man Hardly Trying, Rogue or Suburban Hell, Frank Fan, Jared Henderson, Calleron, Albert Quack, Aiden Hearth, Dark Sin, Gary Kors, Matthew Collins, Brad Oldham, Joel C. Alcazar, Zachary Bradley, Rich Million, Jeremy Helton, Brad Vinia, Boy Fox, Brian Moten, Sean Corey Williams, Chris Pelman, Ozzy Stefano, Clea de Coya, Zeb McCubby, Nathan James, Spiffe, Primal Bass, Boos, Kyle Shikes, Trevor Green, Matthew Barone, Gaston Ramirez, Jordan Smith Bassett, Tyler Charles, Helio Storm, Lloyd and Lord Gazda. Thank you for your continued support, all uh, new and old patrons. Uh, without you, I wouldn't be making videos this much. As usually, there is always an option to chuck a buck my way, so if you think I'm worth the trouble, worth the time, worth the money, uh, the option is always there, link down below in the in the description or up there in the upper right corner of the channel. With all of that said, uh, let's jump right into the meat of the video. As you can see from the title, this is something that you might be thinking, alright, what the heck is this? Um, so, Arcanium is actually um, an extremely volatile, dangerous mineral with unique magical properties. Nobody knows how it came to be, but its very existence and unique magical properties prove even the finest mages still have a lot to learn. Um, now, basically, what I I had an idea for my world when I was making it to make something unique. I'm not gonna say unique, but something uh, something that sets it apart from your generic um, setting, right? So in a way, it's there's a lot of similarities to other worlds, settings, campaigns, whatever you want to call it. But I wanted to have one thing that is omnipresent. It's always there. It's always kind of an option. It's always one of those things that the players might be going for. But in a way, it's it's made that it's not easily accessible. It's not easily usable, but it provides uh, provides very very good bonuses. Very good, kind of like a very good uh, benefit to the party, to the player and the party. So this thing, this Arcanium, is pretty much uh, a kind of loosely drew inspiration from real life in real life we have uranium right which is a radioactive compound uh, material substance which we use to get a lot and lot of energy right so if we think about in terms of um, magical fantasy setting like any kind of setting right you can have something that boosts spells right so not only do you just level up your character but in a way you can access some of that higher level power through means that are somewhat hard to access uh, somewhat wonky to control but in a way are accessible are possible to use and that can definitely spice up your campaign you know so i had this idea of arcanium being um Kind of like there's a raw form and then there's a re uh, refined form and before it can even be remotely safe for use it has to be refined through a long and arduous process in my own world in the world of melandor um, this process mustn't involve any magical or other esoteric means as arcanium is extremely volatile unstable when it interacts with magic in any way so genion's way the empire from the continent of, of horion keeps this process a secret to maintain monopoly of the Arcanium production and export to Oderon. Oderon is the continent which my campaign starts at, which the players in my online campaign have been for the better part of the last three or four months. Uh, and uh, right now they are uh, at the point where they already know some of this stuff, so I was comfortable releasing at least version 1.0 to the general public out there so that you might actually be even considering uh, to use this in your own games if you are a DM or if you want even to, to recommend this to your DM as a player it's a sensible option uh, it's obviously a homebrew it's it hasn't been play tested extensively but it has been play tested to some extent in my home campaign uh, I like high-powered games, and if you and or your DM likes high-powered games as well, this is sort of a way to access some of that higher power 
without actually having to go through the often painful process of leveling your characters from level 1 to level 20, right? Um, so, Arcanium in its refined form is most often used to significantly amplify the effects of ordinary spells in a somewhat safer manner. Many magic users seek this knowledge and its application in their ambitious quests for power, wealth or fame. Uh, rumors exist of other ways to use Arcanium, with goblinoids in school crushing, which is a region in my world, experimenting with the more esoteric applications of Arcanium, in a combination with their monks in Arki. Uh, hard rock dwarves and daisy woods draw. Don't laugh at the names. I let my home campaign players come up with the names of my world, and as you can see, all of these names are pretty mimi. It is what it is, I decided to stick with the names, because, you know, you pay homage to the first players to playtest your uh, bullshit, so, yeah, in a way, I kind of even have to keep the names, even though they are really silly. But anyway, it's, it is what it is, so, <laughs> uh, Daisy Woods Drow and Hard Rock Dwarves allegedly combined Arcanium to speed up, diversify and improve their own craftsmanship of many magic items. This is kept secret for the most part as well. Some mages claim they were able to channel Arcanium with existing items to produce items to produce uh, seemingly impossible feats of magic. However, they never lived these mages, never lived long enough to teach others how to do it. In one way or another, through through tragedy or mystery, uh, they disappeared and remained remembered only through songs, myths, and legends about their daring exploits. So in a way, you can already see there are ways to limit and uh, manifest this rare ex exotic compound substance in your world without actually breaking your campaign completely. So let's go a little bit deeper into that. So raw arcanium ore exudes this harmful aura to any creature possessing any magical capabilities. As long as the creature is within 15 feet of the raw arcanium ore, at the start of the creature's turn, or once every 6 seconds, the creature must make a DC 19 saving throw, with their spellcasting or other ability used for magical purposes. If it fails, the creature takes 2d12 force damage, or half of that if it succeeds. Prolonged exposure to raw ore causes arcanosis, a devastating magical disease that can only be cured via, via magical means. I don't have the details for arcanosis, because that's not something that my players in the online campaign have, uh, have gone through yet, but in time I might even have more details. As you can see, this is pretty much version 1.0. So, I have some other stuff in uh, in the loop, so uh, yeah, if you are interested, and I will definitely at some point release it in the future, make sure to subscribe to my channel and keep the notifications on, hit that bell button, so that you get notified one of those uh, uh, future videos gets released. The way I envisioned this um, substance, this material component, this whatever, is that the price for just one refined arcanium is 30 gold 10 refined arcanium takes up 5 by 5 by 10 feet space i should maybe add feet over here there we go um roughly the entire free space of a portable hall if we go to the portable hall you will see that's it's kind of a cylindrical um space in an extra dimensional plane whatever you want to call it 10 feet deep uh, six feet across it's a cylinder so roughly it's like five by five by ten if you you know envision it in in a, in a, th a three-dimensional space so that would right one, one portable hole would roughly be able to carry ten arcanium right so um, you can quickly see that it's it would definitely be a logistical challenge hauling around larger quantities of uh, arcanium even if your players had enough gold to buy uh, sufficient quantities of arcanium uh, however there are rumors uh, of special magic items capable of storing or even holding more refined arcanium so this is pretty much how i have this thing set up in my own world in my own campaign 
in my own setting. Um, mechanically, what I will have for you prepared today is spell casting and ritual casting. So, there are two ways that you can introduce or incorporate, implement this in your own campaigns to spice things up a little bit, to refresh the boring ordinary spell casting system that we have in. I'm not gonna say it's boring, but for people that play that have been playing for a couple of years, it's definitely might feel a little bit too repetitive. So this might actually make it a little bit more refreshing if you choose to, to use it. The safest, most basic and widely tested, widely known use of refined arcanium is as a universal material component to upcast any spell known or prepared by the spellcaster without character or spell slot level prerequisites. So using Arcanium in this way require, requires a free hand. Even the Warcaster feat doesn't help here as the spellcaster must interact with the Arcanium in a unique, direct and unobstructed way. So in a way you cannot be holding a weapon, a shield and still use Arcanium. No, you have to have, <coughs> sorry, you have to have one of your hands free. Uh, the formula for how much Arcanium is required equals base spell level, minimum of 1 in case of cantrips, uh, times modified, you know, multiplied by the upcast modifier. The modifier equals level of the spell being cast minus the spell slot level being used to cast the spell. For cantrips, the modifier equals the number of damage die used minus the number of damage die, av die available by the character spellcaster level. For example, a 4th level character, a spellcaster of 4th level, attempting to cast a cantrip as if uh, that character, he, she, was a 17th level character or spellcaster. So, in a way, you can, you know, you can, uh, you can even use higher level cantrips, even though you are a lower level character. However, all of this means that, for example, a fireball of a 3rd level, which is a 3rd level spell, right? Uh, a 7th level wizard by the name of, of uh, Federin, for example, decides to use his highest 4th level spell slot to try and upcast the spell as if he used a 7th level spell slot. The formula is 3, which is a base fireball spell level, multiplied by 3, which means that you, um, you subtract the level of the spell slot being spent, uh, from the level of the spell that you are attempting to cast using this exotic esoteric compound. Uh, so 3 times 3 equals 9. That's the amount of Arcanium Federin has to spend in order to attempt to cast a spell at a higher level than they have a spell slot for. So if you do the maths, you can quickly see that you need what, like 9 times uh, 30? Yeah, you need 270 gold worth of Arcanium. And you need an uh, almost entire portable hall filled with Arcanium just to cast the Fireball once, uh, one time, with a higher level slot. So, if you think about this breaking your game, yes, this might very well at certain times if you allow your players the possibility to use of even using Arcanium if, in one way or another uh, to break your one or more of your encounters, but... This is very much, this, this, this can easily tie into your own economy. This can easily tie into your own um, campaign or homebrew, homebrew setting, whatever, where you are in control of what, what magic items the players get. Or even if you are playing out uh, one of your uh, home campaigns using one of the hardcover um, campaigns, right? S uh, comp all, all of these campaigns, right? Uh, you can still mix and match the numbers, you can increase the price, you can maybe make it 50 gold, make it, make it 100 gold per one Arcanium. You are completely in control here. The only thing that I have in my world is that in my world it costs 30 gold, and in order to store 10 Arcanium you need, you actually need a port, like a space, a size of roughly the size of the portable hole. So 5x5x10 five by five by in a way, right? So uh, it's a lot of space. You you can't really, and obviously this, I don't have the weight here to be honest, uh, because I'm not yet comfortable releasing that, but let me just say that it's very, very heavy. So 
if you ju if you know the ordinary carrying capacities of the player characters and all of that, uh, let me just say that more than like less than two people carrying ten arcanium is, in most cases, physically impossible. So yeah, let 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 let's say it like that, right? So in the future, I will release more the information, but for now, this is it, right? So yes, sure, your your players might even be holding Arcanium in their own little pockets or whatever, but this is pretty much gonna become a logistical issue because it takes up a ridiculous amount of space. Just one one Arcanium takes up a ridiculous amount of space. Not not to, not to, not to mention ten, right? So ten is like five by five by ten. That's a that's basically two squares on on the on the player mat on on the on the grid. Like that's two squares in the three D. In three dimensions, so entirety of those three cubes is completely filled by the Arcanium. Again, you are completely free to even increase the volume of Arcanium that's required to store just one or ten. This is just the way I did it in my campaign. I found it to be working fine. Uh, my home campaign players were able to use Arcanium in certain cases, but it was pretty much like they had to be in the position that they can exploit it so they had to set it, set it up or just like find themselves in a position that they can use it otherwise like they weren't really hauling that stuff anywhere like it it, it weighs a ton it's very very heavy uh, it takes up a lot of space it's very expensive so yeah it's it's definitely hard to get um so yeah that's kind of like how much arcanium you spend However, the first time any spellcaster, divine or arcane, casts a spell amplified in this way, he or she first has to pass a raw ability spellcasting. Uh, that's a redundant. A raw uh, spellcasting ability check. Uh, talk about s uh, <laughs> uh, spell checking and foolproofing, uh, proofreading. Yeah, that obviously hasn't been done in this file, <laughs> but we are doing it on the fly. A spellcasting ability check at disadvantage. Um, if they use wisdom to cast spells, for example, cleric or druid, uh, they have to pass wisdom ability check every time. Well, first time uh, they cast a spell amplified in this way. The DC is 10 times the upcast modifier. On a success, the spell gets cast, and the spellcaster now permanently knows how to safely. That means without the need to roll spellcasting ability checks again in the future, use that specific spell slot level to upcast that specific spell up to a level that was cast as long as he or she has access to sufficient amounts of refined arcanium. If the spellcaster wants to use a different level spell slot to upcast the same spell in this way again, he or she has to make another spellcasting ability check, but this time it's a normal roll, it's not a roll made at disadvantage, because the spellcaster is more familiar with the entire process of using Arcanium with this specific spell, right? So, it, for example, if we use good old Fedrin, Fedrin, for the, for the first time ever in his whole life he's using any spell slot, in this case a 4th level spell slot, to upcast Fireball as a 7th level spell. He has to succeed on a DC 13 intelligence check made at disadvantage because this is the first time ever in his entire life he is combining Arcanium with the Fireball spell. Right, ever. He never attempted to do this ever again, ever before. On a success, so meaning that if he succeeds on a DC 13 intelligence check, which is made at disadvantage, uh, he or she can now safely upcast Fireball as a 5th, 6th and 7th level spell using his 4th level spell slot. So, as long as he has access to sufficient amount of Arcanium, 3, 6 and 9 in this case, depending on a level of the spell being upcast, 5, 6 or 7, uh, however, if he ever decides to use a third level spell slot, a spend, you know, to, 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 to spend a, a third level spell slot instead of a fourth level spell slot that he spent at the beginning, um, Federin has to roll a normal ability check, not made at disadvantage, because even though he might not be 
exactly sure how to do it. He has at least had some experience, some practical experience doing it before. So at least once in his lifetime, he cast Fireball uh, using Arcanium and he cast it at a higher level than he spent a slot uh, for that spell. On a failed ability check, the caster has to make a corresponding saving throw. Uh, wisdom save if it's a, like, same thing, right? You, uh, it's the same, it's, it's the saving throw that corresponds to your spellcasting ability. If you're an intelligence caster, it's gonna be intelligence, uh, uh, um, a saving throw. If you're a wisdom caster, it's gonna be a wisdom saving throw, charisma, blah, blah, Yeah. So the DC equals 10 plus X, where X is the level of the spell that was attempted to be cast. So using the above example uh, of trying to cast a 7th level fireball, the DC is very simply put 10 plus 7, 7th level slot, 17 in total. On a failed save, on a failed save, on a fail, on a failure, I need some, I need some, uh, I need to do some work uh, on the wording of these, on the, of these things. Uh, the caster takes XD12 force damage, so with the above example again, it would be 7d12 damage because of the level of the spell. On a success, the caster takes half. Uh, so yeah, it still hurts, but a little bit less. Um, so in a way, you can see that this would be like a high stakes game at lower levels. Because if your caster fails uh, 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 ability check... Or, or anything, uh, pretty much like that might even outright kill the character. But as they get like the 4th, 5th, 7th, 8th levels, even level 10, they get to the point where even 7d12 damage is not something that can kill them, you know, but very well, you know, you it might, it might hurt. So if you get into a position where you have, like you are thinking about using Arcanium, but... You never used Arcanium with that spell before, you are kind of like, okay, taking damage here might be bad. So it's it's introducing additional decision making to the players, uh, which is a part of the game that's often fun. You know, it's, it's often fun when the character decides, okay, do I try to go YOLO here? Do I try to take as much risk as possible to take this enemy down? Or cast this spell for whatever reason using a higher level slot than I have access to on my own uh, with my own devices. Or do I just play it safe, you know, use the highest level slot that I have access to as a 7th level or 9th level character or whatever. Uh, and just cast the spell that way. So I found it to be very, you know, my players obviously use it in my home campaign. Um, I manage to challenge them in ways that I probably wouldn't even be able to challenge them if they didn't have access to Arcanium, meaning that at some point, you know, if I just dropped a bunch of shit that I dropped on them at some point during the campaign, they might have even died. But they had access to Arcanium and it was pretty much just like walking a park for the most part. Uh, people still died in my campaign, but this was uh, an interesting part of the campaign for many many months uh at, at some point this becomes obsolete because characters get ninth level slots anyway at some point um so yeah i mean they rely on this less and less but i mean it is just one of the ways of using arcanium and seeing how a lot of campaigns actually don't go past level 10 12 uh, this might be one of like that thing that's gonna spice up the campaign you know uh, and yes, I'm perfectly aware this only covers spellcasters, even with ritual casting, that still means only spellcasters get to benefit from this. But again, this goes back to my online campaign. Uh, I haven't been uh, released, I haven't told my players everything about Arcanium, so I would like to keep it that way for the time being. And uh, as the time passes, as they get exposed to more and more information, I will be... Uh, telling that information to them and probably releasing uh, additional videos in the future. So again, uh, subscribe and hit the be uh, notification bell so that you can get notified in the future. Ritual casting is somewhat similar. Uh, it can be sped up with Arcanium. For every minute a caster wants to speed up the ritual, uh, he she uh, has to spend one times the spell level in Arcanium. On top of that, he, she has to make a regular spellcasting ability check. No disadvantage. 
Uh, the DC is 10 plus the number of reduced minutes. On a successful ability check, the caster can now safely speed up the same ritual, ritual spell again up to a time he spent casting it, as long as he she has sufficient arcanium. On a failed check, DC 10 plus spell level, corresponding ability saving throw, pretty much like the same concept as with uh, up, uh, higher level slots. On a failed, on a failure, on a failed fail, uh, okay. There we go. Now it's good. On a failure, uh, X, 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 the 12 force damage, where X is the number of uh, number of reduced minutes, half damage on success. So in a way, like if your caster wants to cast a spell immediately, uh, ritually, without spending a slot, he can very much do this, right? Uh, but there's a risk, because the DCs go very high, especially at lower levels, so there's a decent chance of this failing, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, basically, like, if the caster wants to decrease the ritual by 10 minutes, that's gonna be, the DC is gonna be 20, you know? Uh, this is, DC of 20 is very, very high, even for, like, 10 level, level 10 characters, so they might as well, like, fail that. And if they fail, they have to make another saving throw, and, you know, they take, uh, 10d12 force damage, half of that on a success, eh... It gets dicey, you know, but in a way they can cast some spells immediately instead of waiting for like 10 minutes. So this might radically change how encounters or how dungeon delves or some situations in the game happen. So you have to be careful, but at the same time, there's very easy to balance this via, again, making it expensive. Making it bulky, making it uh, take take up a lot of volume, right? Or just making it heavy, you know, make every arcanium like one million pounds. So what? You're not gonna be able to carry that. You need a magic item for it. So there's ways to actually balance this instead of just like actually dealing with these numbers. You know, make it hard for your players to actually get this. Once they get this, it's actually a reward because they, you know, you, they had to go through trials and tribulations to actually even get to this thing. Um, so, for example, Federin casting Liam Moon's Tiny Hut as a ritual, trying to reduce the time from, from 11 minutes to 5 minutes. 6 minutes faster casting time requires 6 minutes. Time, uh, 6, which is the number of minutes, times 3, which is the level of the spell. It's 18 Arcanium. You can quickly see, like, okay, we need... We need something here which is able to co to to handle eight to hold eighteen arcanium. We need we need I don't know five by five by twenty or whatever like whatever amount of space required to hold uh, twenty arcanium, right? So in a way, this becomes the way of this becomes the game of not just okay we we can cast spells weirdly and we can cast spells to to break the game, but at the same time, like, how do we actually accomplish this, you know? So then you you can, in a way, put the players in a position where they create, like, they they, they do something creative, you know? So whatever, it's, it's pretty much the domain of homebrew. Homebrew is where the fun stuff happens anyway. Uh, intelligence ability check with a DC of 10 plus 6, which is the number of minutes, so 16. On a fail, intelligence saving throw, 10 plus spell level, 13 in this case. Uh, on a fail... The, the amount of minutes, that's the amount of damage, damage dice, on a success half that damage, pretty pretty simple, pretty much the same concept as with uh, spell slots. So, in a way, this would be, this would be the system, right? This would be something that you can uh, introduce to your own players, to your own spellcasters, especially lower level spellcasters. A lot of times, especially like wizards and sorcerers, uh, they are really, really feel underpowered or, or on lower levels. So, if you give them some, like, additional thing like this, um, this can put them, this can make them, I'm not gonna say more useful at low levels, but definitely more powerful. Uh, so in a way, it's gonna be kind of like compensating for the squishiness, you know. I know I played like a, a wizard from level 1 to 5, it was a vocation wizard, it was the most painful experience in my life. I had to, I had to fear for every like little bit of amount of damage, like 6 damage was way too much damage for me, even at level 4 and 5, so yeah, it's, it's a very, very, very stressful experience. So 
in a way you can reward your spellcasters with this and uh, yeah if you if you like this part of the system that I have in my world which is pretty much something you can copy and paste into your own world if you like if you like to if you are a DM or if you are a player with a DM who is willing to experiment with uh, systems like these or others uh, definitely like share comment subscribe hit the bell button uh, I will be releasing more Arcanium specific videos in the future because I do have more stuff already kind of fleshed out But I'm gonna be releasing it slowly uh, Going back to my patreon page I'm thinking because of the fact that I'm gonna be gradually introducing more and more homebrew stuff that I have uh, finished up uh, sitting up on my hard drive or my uh, notes I'm pretty much gonna be releasing that to the fireball tier so everybody else is still gonna be so magical secrets is still gonna be the tier for all of the files and all the builds but uh, I'm thinking about this these uh, homebrew materials I do want more people to start DMing and I like experimenting I think experimenting is actually good even though I really don't like I really don't like allowing a lot of unearthed arcana at the same time. I think there should be limits to, to what you experiment. You are, uh, if you're a DM, you're in control anyway, so you can decide what you do anyway. But if you're interested, I am going to release this very file, which you can see in the video, uh, in, on uh, for you to download here uh, as uh, as a member of my uh, Fireball Pledge tier and. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's gonna be a little bit of a perk for all the people that uh, decide to hop in the Fireball tier. I'm pretty much gonna redesign the tiers a little bit, so offer a little bit more value in these lower tiers. Um, with that said, yeah, always always welcome to chuck a buck my way. I am considering uh, turning this into a more of a primary, uh, primary uh, project of mine because it's... It's growing decently. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. And uh, yeah, with that said, once again, like, share, comment, subscribe. I cannot repeat the amount of times how important that is. This is more important than any money you throw my way because without your likes, views, shares, comments, and subscriptions, this channel wouldn't be even at this point uh, in its career. Even though there's plenty more. Uh, points for it to grow but you know with your support and whatever you've been doing so far interacting with my videos and channel in any way shape or form I've gotten here I feel like we're I'm gonna keep growing this has all been thanks to you and thanks to all of you I do feel I'm not gonna say obliged but heavily compelled to kind of like come up with stuff like this now I'm not gonna claim this is the most balanced thing out there in the world I I'm pretty much experimenting with my own campaigns and systems in my own free time uh, but I mean I am gonna be releasing out there out it out there in the public you're, you're free to tell me that I'm an idiot if you think this is overpowered which very well might be for your own campaigns and your DMing style your own sessions but it's an option for you to use, you know, and I very much want to introduce more DMs to the world. And uh, if this is something that would excite you into DMing, by all means, take it, run with it. I think you're going to have fun. Part of the fun is actually uh, allowing the players to explore the world for the first time. And if they don't know about this system, you can surprise them. And uh, yeah. So with that said, that's it. Min Max Munch King out and uh, talk to you soon. Uh, and yeah, so one more, one, another video is gonna be done, hopefully really soon. But no surprise, no <laughs> promises. Uh, on the other end, I, I still am technically on the 50 days, 50 videos challenge, but I'm way behind. So I'm less and less confident I'm gonna be able to actually accomplish that. But hey, stick around for another 20 something days. I might actually be even that crazy to make like 30 something more videos in, in the span of 20 something, even less than 20 days. So stick around, I'm crazy, let's see how this goes. Uh, share, subscribe, like, you know, you know the drill. Min Max Munchkin out and talk to you soon.